Hello, and welcome to a bonus podcast from MinMax. I'm Ben Hansen. Thank you for being here. MinMax is a patron about games, friends, and getting better. For this most bonus of podcast, we're joined by Jana Garcia. Yo, what's good? Oh, I'll tell you what's good is Sarah Podzorski's background. Welcome, Sarah. Hello. Uh, we are here for New Show Plus with a bonus podcast. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, how this is, why this is, uh, every single week, we let $10 Patreon supporters vote for which new show we create or continue with New Show Plus. And for the third week in a row, this is entering the horse girl arena, Sarah. People mm-hmm. have voted for a bonus podcast. Especially after last week, where we talked about smells and our trash cans. Like, I'm surprised to be here, quite honestly. You're trying to sandbag the bonus podcast? Yeah, like, I know. I'm just saying. I was like, I'm shocked. <laughs> so it's anything you're involved with, Sarah. Like, people are like, whatever Sarah's in, that's, that's where I cast my vote. No, it's I like think- when you don't read the policies of something and you're like... <laughs> This seems like someone I agree with. Like, I think my friend agrees with this person. This is close enough. Mm-hmm. I think there might be something to that, except for the fact that one of the biggest slam dunks of the year, I thought, was early on with New Show Plus for this year, putting like basically a show called Sarah the Sonic Girl. It was all about you playing Sonic games. I'm like, what well, was this that is up against. I, it was up against, oh, the um, the government checks, I think, being sent to every home. I think that's what people had to vote for. <laughs> I don't I don't even remember what it was up against, but it was just mind-boggling that that did not win. Where it's like, okay, now it's fully well, unpredictable. Maybe it's because people, I don't know, I feel like people will vote for the memes, but maybe only to a certain degree. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. And, like, you know, we had an option in the poll this week that was I was excited about called Lil Let's Plays. Sorry. <clears throat> Little Let's Plays, I think was the official name of that. And we were going to play through uh, Ground Zeroes. And it didn't win. It lost by two. So Metal Gear fans... It was so close. It was, it was so like close. neck and neck up yes. until midnight. It was very scary. Uh, so if you're a Metal Gear fan, I'm sorry for letting you down. But hey, you can always support us on Patreon. That's gross, isn't it? Hey, you should have voted for it, dude. Um, but here, here's, here's what I'm learning about New Show Plus. Is I feel like if I would have said in that description and it's not just sarah but if i would have leaned to like anybody i think specifically and like photoshopped sarah as a snake Mm -hmm. in that photo or in the screenshot Mm -hmm. and then made it clear in the description that it was sarah playing instead of just saying we'll do a let's play of ground zeros you know i feel like that always works like if it's like hey we're gonna go back and play um uh, so you're basically explaining how you would have rigged it better I, how I should have rigged it better. Your yeah. little let's play to win. Yeah, I think so. Like next time it'll be like Jeff, um, you know, it'll be a little let's play, but it'll be like Jeff, um, playing Gunstar Heroes or something. Mm-hmm. But if you just say we'll play Gunstar Heroes, it's all well and good. But if the it was like a Photoshop image of Jeff, um, like, I don't know, stuck inside of a Genesis or something just quirky like that, I feel like people would vote for it. And that's why mm-hmm. they don't allow pictures on ballot boxes for U.S. Uh, votes. <laughs> For U.S. votes. Elections is the word I'm looking for. Hey, yeah. 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 There. yeah. Um, obviously, as we talked about a little bit before we started, uh, Janet, this is a bananas day in the game industry to be recording something specifically, not something specifically about Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard. Um, but we're going to talk about it on the main show, but we can touch on a little bit here if people have any thoughts. Um, when is Microsoft going to buy MinMax? It's just Matt Brown asks. Great question. Hey, we'll have any conversation. I'm not making any promises, but we'll talk to anybody. Um, Janet, walk me through. Gut reaction to that. Walk me through you opening your eyes and seeing that news. This is crazy. What happened to the reevaluating the relationship? Yep. I guess it doesn't really mean anything. Wait, but hold on. Maybe this means Kotex out, which maybe that's good. But wait, right. we don't know because they can't say anything. Yep. But wait, also, let's not forget that like business is business and like Microsoft did this because it's financially advantageous for them, not because they're trying to cleanse the oh, <laughs> game no. industry of making like a better world. And then I guess the last one is just like, you know, bringing it back to like the workers where I think I do. It's, it's always weird because I'm like so from the outside in, you know, obviously we're games media, so we're involved to a degree but i'm yeah. not a reporter nor am i like talking to workers nor am i a worker there so um one thing i hope is that even if kotick's out that we don't just see a bunch of people like very uncontextualized like we we did it you know like a george bush style victory Mission banner because yeah. you know there's still work to be done and i mean i don't i don't think any job's perfect um and i'm always on the side of like you know workers and unionizing and things so i'm just hoping that 
we hear good things from like I think it's called God was it ABK Alliance like the Activision Blizzard Workers right, Alliance right right um, and that continues to make progress and that people you know like I I want to be careful not to celebrate or mourn things that I don't have the full context for fully and at the end of the day my thing is like I'm suspicious of all corporations I'm also like a Game Pass person so it's like I don't know yeah. I'm just here Microsoft wants my $15 and they're like we're gonna get through any means necessary what is it gonna take you're gonna pay up because yeah. you're gonna be paying for it even if you don't know you're paying for it like when you go to the grocery store and you buy something and you're like I like this brand not this brand it's like guess what they're owned by the same company it's all Coca-Cola this is all illusion there is no choice welcome to more of America capital Sure. That's the vibes. That's yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that is literally what's happening. The uh, yeah, it's like in um, Cloud Atlas, Co- Cloud Atlas, Cloud Atlas. Why can't I say that? In the future, they just call movies Disney's. In the future, we'll just call games. All games will just be called Xboxes. I was so into Cloud Atlas. Like, I didn't read. Did you read the book? Yeah. And or watch the. Movie? I, I haven't okay. seen the movie. Uh, I'm very is sophisticated the book that good? way. Um. Here's the thing. It, it was fine. I don't read a lot of okay. fiction. And Jeff Cork was really talking about how it was like some next level amazing stuff. And I read it and it was kind of a slog okay, okay, with so a couple interesting the ideas. I, I, I didn't read the book yet. Yeah. I watched the movie like around like high schoolish age. Like, you know, I was younger when I watched the movie. And I remember watching the movie. And other than the fact that it is inherently always a little bit weird when like an actor like is like dressed as a different race. There is a reason that they do that in Cloud Atlas because all the characters are like different people. Like it makes it does make sense, but it's still a little weird. Right. right. That, that's putting that in a bucket, put, putting that aside and just looking at like the movie and what it was trying to say, I was like, wow, this is this is so good. This is like the pinnacle. Like I thought it was fire. And then I watched it. Like I was talking to my boyfriend about it and I was like, oh yeah, Cloud Atlas. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Like I've thought of getting like that, the tattoo that so-and-so had. Like it's what? just so, you know, and we watched it and then I was like, it's, it's fine. Like it's actually not. And I like felt kind of like, no, you know, it sounds so like head bad or head ass that it's like embarrassing right. to like Cloud Atlas. But I was like, I thought this was like, I felt like if you guys watch Parks and Rec, that episode where Ben is like, I compared my claymation movie to Avatar. I felt like that, you know, a little bit. So <laughs> is that the there you go. More, what is it? Tuesday mornings? What is the name of that little stop motion thing? In oh, I have no idea what the name of it is. Oh, but. my God. That I have not. I watched like the first two seasons of Park, Parks and Rec, and I'm really hit or miss beyond that. Uh, just I haven't seen that much, and I, I, I need to go back and watch all of it. But that episode I watched like live when it aired. And it's, Requiem I don't. Requiem for a Tuesday. Requiem for a Tuesday, yes. That's what Chad says. I know. It's like a weird time and place thing. But do you ever have those moments where your mind just shatters from seeing something comedically? Like not having watched that much Parks and Rec at all, I watched that live and I could not stop laughing. It like destroyed me for an entire night. Just how stupid short it was. And it starts playing the REM song that it gets cut off. It's like, I just, I can't imagine anything funnier than that. This is as good as it gets. Uh, hey, Sarah Bozorski, you're also on this podcast. Where Hello. Sarah, I'm always, um, I'm always confused by you for a thousand different reasons. One of the reasons is I'm confused by you because I forget within myself to remind people that if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can also unlock the podcast version by going over to Patreon. We put this in the Patreon exclusive podcast feed. So thank you for your support. If you want to unlock the podcast version of these bonus podcasts. But the main reason I'm confused by you is every once in a while I think, I don't know how into like gaming news or like the industry stuff Sarah is. And obviously this Activision Microsoft news mm-hmm. is going above and beyond that. But like, what is your interest level in like following the day-to-day gaming news stuff? I mean, I follow pretty closely. Yeah. But I don't. To this, when I saw the news, I was like, oh, like, kind of sad, bummed. I was like, oh, competition's good. It, like, it sucks to see, like, less competition. Yeah. And then I was like, my Xbox Game Pass now became an even better investment, mm-hmm. is what I thought. Yeah. And now I'm just kind of going to wait to see where it pans out. Because all the speculating, I mean, we're not going to figure anything out until, like, a few weeks. Like, I don't think anything's going to come from the speculation. Right. Which I think everybody on Twitter likes to do. Everybody um, jumping so I, I'm not going to yeah. jump in. Like I'm not like two feet in the kiddie pool of like speculating and splashing around. Here's uh, don't see this as me trying to point at you and be like, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> accuse you of not following this closely. But are you the type of person that like will click through articles and like read through gaming news, or are you just kind of like, hey, you get the gist of things from Twitter and kind of move on? So I mean, like frankly, like a lot of it right now is just speculating. Right. Like, what right. are like it's all just speculating. So to me, I'm like, well, I could do something else 
And then when it actually comes out as news, I could figure it out then. Yeah, it's. I, I'm kind of with you. Like, I like following politics, God forbid. But um, I just, I can't handle podcasts and political podcasts about what's going to happen in the 2022 race. What's going to happen in the 2024 race? And I know so much just about that is about the horse race and stuff. It's like, no, no one knows anything. There's plenty to talk about in the political world in the past or in the present. We don't need to have these speculation podcast which frankly i think it's lazy podcasting i think it's really easy podcasting you, just to sit back and be like oh do this? you ever feel like oh my god but that's still me though because i have the same kind of feeling where yeah, at yeah. the end of the day i i really do like to emphasize that i'm just a person that likes games and follows games and i have thoughts like any other human being but when i say like i think sony will do this like i don't know <laughs> i mean I'll, I'll tell you everything that i know about mm -hmm. why i'm making that guess and why i feel like oh i think it makes sense because you look at the you know i'm out here with the charlie conspiracy board and i'm like if you look at last year's state of play and they right. on the playstation blog they have posted stuff but they've also gone to gdc which you know and it's a lot of frankly kind of nothing right yeah like so do you ever feel weird about the fact that like you know even like last week on our show it was like uh, most anticipated games and it's like well, do you think this is going to come out like that is <laughs> inherently speculative no oh absolutely it's like well nintendo let's stuff slip in the past let's see breath of the wild slipped like three times and so far the sequel has only slipped once so maybe that means it's yeah who who knows and it's like you know it, with every everything in every industry i'd imagine and just the gaming industry is my little vantage point of it like everything is a thousand times more complicated than you expect like every time you know I, i'm really Spoiled this way because back at Game Informer, I got to go visit so many studios, you know, for cover story trips for the magazine. So I went to like, I went on 80 cover story trips. So like spending multiple days in video game studios and spending a lot of time with these developers talking about things and just about the news and about news stories about their studios. Like everything is always so far off. It's always like, well, you got the broad strokes right, but everybody's speculating. It's just people like to talk. And it turns out there's a whole industry about talking about games and... The bad news is we're in one. <laughs> I don't know. So it's yeah, everything with a huge grain of salt. Like everybody's speculating about what's going to be exclusive, what's going to be not exclusive. We were having these discussions about Elder Scrolls and Starfield a while ago and Starfield's locked down, but Elder Scrolls is still in that weird window of probably leaning exclusive, but they haven't really confirmed anything yet as far as I know. Um, also, Shazira in the chat is a uh, very smart. Uh, Shazira says, uh, she's so smart, I don't even know what these acronyms are that she's using. Uh, a few things, she says. As someone who has worked DD on the legal side of mergers and acquisitions, I assume that's some lawyer thing. Does anybody know what DD is? I assume it's not drunk driving. Um, uh, as somebody who's worked DD on the legal side of merger, mergers and acquisitions, I wouldn't make too much of things said right now because everything released right now was carefully crafted for stockholders, not upset the evaluation to stay within regulations, etc. Yeah, another good reminder. Just everybody, everybody slow down. Oh, deep dive. Somebody has worked deep dive. Thank you, Ian Tickler. Due diligence. Thank you, Shazira. Yeah, I, I mean, like Dunkin' Donuts as Ooh. the... Uh... That was good. Dance, dance, shipwright. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, everything's still up in the air. We'll talk more about it on the main podcast this week and get into all that, all that fun stuff. Um... Sarah? Yeah. Sarah? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, here's what it was talking to me. I listened to last week's bonus podcast. Oh, and, yeah? Um, and you mentioned in that podcast that you have been playing, or that you played a lot of Banished. Yes. And that you're playing, what is that spiritual successor to Banished called? Settlement Survival, I think. Settlement Survival. Do you know these games at all, Janet? No. This is a very niche it is, market. but I bet Banished has sold like, do you think it's cracked a million at this point? It feels like one of those I, games that's niche, but it's everybody knows it, right? No, because I thought I was the only one who knew it. And Ooh. then you were like, I played Banished. And I'm like, you people besides me played that game? Yeah, uh, let us know in the chat and in the YouTube comments if you also played Banished. So it's a um, sim survival, I guess is the best it's way like to describe it. It's a genre? city building sim survival strategy game. Right. Which, I loved it. Um, okay, Zero played a lot of Banished. All right, people played Banished. Will House played Banished. It's awesome. Uh, Aramite says, aw, little Let's Play didn't win. Hey, we were pushing for the little Let's Play. But anyways, the, the part that blew my mind is Banished, and then, help me out, what is the, I, it's the worst name ever. What is the, what is the thing called? The Spiritual Successor? Yeah, Settlement Survival. And Settlement I do have to survival. look it up ever since, uh, every time you ask me, because it is such a bad name. It's, it's really generic. But the part that blew my mind is you getting all high and mighty in your anti-Age of Empires 4 crowd or 
acting like that's some nerd stuff, but Banish is like very close to that arena. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I liked I I hurl accusations while living in my glass house. Then <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Yeah, I mean that's some nerd stuff. You could get into an RTS if you tried. You're so close if you like stuff like I, Banish. But I only I specifically only like these like niche medieval RTS games that aren't that stressful. Like I don't want to control an army. Okay. I want to control a group of peasants and make them labor for me. I want serfdom. Yeah. Okay. So it's Not kind of like army dumb. It's kind of just like a super Sims in a way. That's mm -hmm. kind of your perspective on this thing. It's like zoomed out Sim City kind of. I would say. Right. Yeah. Like Janet. Yeah. Imagine like a Sim City, but if you can track every person in that city and then they can die and there's like disease. I guess that I does. A, I had a serial killer get loose. People got really upset about that. <laughs> really? I'm guessing, that went on I'm for like way answer, too long. <laughs> I'm guessing the answer is yes. But does SimCity get less obtuse as the iterations go on? Because I played OG SimCity for the first time like through two years ago, and I didn't know what the what was going on. I probably couldn't swear. Here. I had no idea. I was looking at game fact guides written in HTML, trying to figure out. Oh, How do I no. connect the river to the water to the electricity? And then there's a I, the only thing I I was like making like this little like forest, and I'm like I can make it into the shape of a heart, but I don't know why people <laughs> think this is one of the best games of all time because I don't know what's going on what here. What are you What are you doing? I'm like I'm not trying to get into Fire Emblem oh, by going back to the yes. original Fire Emblem. Like what the hell? Okay, here's what I was doing and what I plan to do at some point in the future um, once I get back to this project. I was doing um, a top 100 game series where, but this is when I was at IGN, so I was just doing it with IGN's list. But now that I'm like not at IGN, I would probably just make it a much broader like across the industry like the different top 100 games and one of the top 100 games on IGN's list at least at the time was OG SimCity like SimCity 2000 or whatever um and yeah I don't think that's game that game is good anymore because I can't understand it not that I'm the end-all be-all but I was like I when's the last time y'all played this just throw in the look, like, look SimCity 2000 going on. it was amazing and the, you know the cool thing about SimCity 2000 back in the day is this is something that you were on the computer it was on the computer, and it was it was awesome. It was awesome back in the day, but a uh, time and a place. But the cool thing, and I never hear anybody else talk about this, is I forget if I have the box for it. Um, well, I have a box for SimCopter. Have you ever heard of SimCopter, Janet? No. Okay, so that, at some point, I want to find a way to stream that game because it was like my first open world game. It was absolutely amazing. You can fly through cities. They also had another PC game called Streets of SimCity, where you could, it was Twisted Metal SimCity, but here was the part that was awesome, is you could build your city in SimCity 2000, and then you could fly through that city in SimCopter or like fight in it in the cars in Streets of SimCity. You could like import your entire city to other games. So like GTA Sims? It, yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> it was absolutely bananas amazing to have the interactivity, and Streets of SimCity was barely playable because it was so bad, and... I've talked about it before, but the protagonist in SimCopter um, is one of the most iconic, ugly things I've ever seen in a game. Let's see if I can find this. SimCopter protagonist. Um, oh, let's see. I used him for a thumbnail for Game Informer. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, let's see. Here's, here's about the best look we'll get at the characters. Here, I'll send it to you in Discord. These are what the characters look like. Oh, what? Well, that didn't work at all. Hang on. That was very much my experience with SimCity. It's just like data, image, backslash. Yeah, well, ignore ignore that part, though. But hang on. Look at this one. Look at this beast. So these are the characters of... Well, you know what? I, I don't want to download your... What is a JFIF file? Dude, you need to understand. Look, it's a file from 1997. Oh, my God. What is this? What am I looking at here? I downloaded it. You got to download it. <laughs> oh, God. What is this? Sorry. What you must... Can you pull this up on the stream? I don't know how uh, technologically complicated that might get. But... I think I might be able to. Let me just drag and drop. Are these people yeah, not wearing clothes? Fancy. Um, this so... is like um, a painting at like a museum or something. Or it's yeah. like, what do you... And then, like on the side, they'd be like, S "Art is so and so like to manipulate proportions in order to, da -da -da, you know." Also, they were going this? through a lot personally at the time. Yeah, I'll put it in the archive for the YouTube version. Um, so yeah, these are apparently people. Oh, thanks for the big sub, by the way, Xtor Bomb. Um, this is what people look like in SimCity, and the reason that they're not wearing naked is they had, and I'm sure this was some uh, weird homophobic ang angle back in the '90s, but they had just like big groups where it was just a bunch bunch of naked guys in speedos and it was like just some weird party happening that would break out in the streets of SimCity every once in a while like there's a weird 
sexual current with the Sim series, which is bizarre. Like, I don't even remember Sim Tower. But if you built up to the 69th floor of Sim Tower, it was also just like a, a gay orgy going on up there. It's like just weird stuff. And then obviously with The Sims, you got the hanky panky and all that fun stuff. I thought so that was going to take like a Babylon angle. It's like if you build to the hundredth, you meet God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Connie's a cool points out that it said naked guys and speedos. You get the idea. Speedos, I think you should legally be considered naked if you're wearing a speedo. I don't think that's You're really to close <laughs> to yeah. being naked at that point. You're basically already but, there. I don't know. Well, it's like a contextualization thing, right? Because if you're at the beach, I mean, it's definitely like a bold choice, but it makes more sense. But like when you're on the street, which GTA does that a lot too, where it's like, there'll be like all people, like, you know, men, women, just wearing like bathing suits uh-huh. out on like just the ma- downtown and I'm like I've never seen this in real life if you're not by a beach so you're just in your swimwear yeah I assume that's what LA is like for you all the time it's just everybody is constantly wearing their <laughs> bikini Everyone's walking around yeah it's more like if you go down by Santa Monica it's like mm. a beach beach vibe. there's beach towns but out here where I am there's not water super close besides like the LA river which is fake <laughs> and fa- and rarely like has any liquid in it um except for when it rains and then it destroys everything cuz there's no infrastructure to handle water so wait like when it rains does it become like a crazy deluge going down the LA river um th- i don't know how crazy it gets i mean it's like right now like in the LA river is like it stretches like really long like it's pretty much empty it has like it's almost like you know how when you don't shut off the tub all the way and there's like that trickle that's what the river looks like Sweet. and then it can like fill up all crazy, which I think that's the point of it being there to kind of just like take in the water. It's really just like a big drain of a river because it's right. man made. I'm like, yeah, it's man made. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, but like when it rains, like it's really bad for like all of society here because it gets like really flooded. And then like anyone who's like homeless, like loses everything, like right. literally everything. Um, so it gets, yeah, there's just not good infrastructure for it. It's like when it snows somewhere where it's not supposed to snow, it just gets chaotic. Yuck. Uh, would you ever leave LA? Um, yeah, I probably would. Um, my boyfriend has like stuff in Buffalo because he's from there, but I don't think mm. I want to go there because it's so cold and so boring. Um, yeah, it's very cold. To, sorry to Buffalo. It's colder <laughs> than from like, Buffalo, where we live. Yeah, right. And it's like, uh, and you know, there's like financial reasons to make that move, and like I don't need to live in LA to do my job, but like I like mm-hmm. living in LA. You, um, you moved to LA within like the yeah. past couple years. Yeah, I think um, my boyfriend really likes San Diego, though. Like, he's not really as enamored with L.A. as I am. Yeah. So I feel like in terms of, you know, assuming things work out and we, like, stay together long term, like, the idea of where are we putting roots down is still up in the air. But I imagine we'd still be in California, at least. You want to stay somewhere in there? Yeah. Buffalo has, yeah. Um, guys, is Buffalo or Rochester that has the State of Play Museum, which is a really cool museum oh. that has a lot of video game stuff in it, but it also has, like, like toys in general. But Buffalo does have, it like, a Rochester. game space. Like, he was part of, like, the Buffalo game space and stuff like that there. Um, someone said that I'm from, yeah, I'm from Chicago. Um, so I've been in the cold. I've served my time. Yeah, <laughs> but you forgot. You forgot what it's really like. But it's awful. It's not like I'm going to be nostalgic for it. Like, I do, I will say it's nice that y'all have, like, a Christmas vibe, you know, for those who celebrate, like, which I celebrate Christmas, like, we don't have, like, Christmas energy here as much, though it is better than San Francisco, where I feel like no one decorated anything, like, out in LA, people are decorating, so it feels more like Christmas time. What, um, we have an audience down, down under, I'm always curious about Christmas in Australia. Like, Christmas in LA is confusing, but at least it's, like, winter, right? Mm -hmm. But you're literally- I don't like to think about it, that's, like, high on the list of things I don't like to think about, is Christmas in Australia. Because it just breaks your brain and you realize everything's yeah, relative does. and all that fun stuff? Like, yeah. Thinking of it as a summer holiday and not a winter holiday? Mm. Yeah, and can you imagine celebrating the 4th of July in the winter in Australia? That must be so confusing for everybody. Yeah, I bet they're really confused when they were like, it's too cold for an American barbecue in, in my Australia. Do you think... I was going to ask... Well, I will ask. Do you think other countries... Do you think they ever, 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 ever have any fun of like celebrating like an American holiday? over no. there but then i realized like we rarely will celebrate even like boxing day here in the states you know and that's feels no, i don't think enough. i don't think they're celebrating uh american independence but it'd be fun for anywhere. just like a party like hey let's get together and i guess let's make it i don't know fourth of july theme just for like something random something from a completely different culture i think it'd be kind of like a fun little fun little bit 
for you to do with your friends. The point is, uh, thank you, Grizzle Gaming, for that sub on Twitch. We appreciate it. Um, oh, Sarah, where I was going with uh, something originally was um, those Sim survival games. Have you seen a game called Timberborn? Oh. Why does it feel? It feels familiar. You should look it up. It is very much in the banished uh, school, except it's mm -hmm. all about beavers. It is like a high tech oh, yeah. beaver society. Um, and the is music it, oh, is yeah, amazing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to check it out. Like the music's incredible, and it's just weird to have like, all right, you're beavers, but you're also researching science points. There's different clans of beaver beavers for like who can do what when. Um, mm. And I just I played it a little bit uh, over the weekend, and uh, it's weird, like, because you know the world goes through these big changes, and there's like a drought, and so like the river dried up. And so you're just like controlling a colony of beavers in like a desert. You realize it's just a weird idea to see a beaver in a desert. It's not where those things should be, you know? Oh, hang on. Yeah, people are bringing up in chat that apparently this is some Badoof propaganda. It's some Badoof propaganda. Maybe it would open the door to Love and Badoof, though, if you just tried this game. And it was all about taking care of beavers and making sure they had houses to live in. Think about it. Or we kill all the beavers in a drought. Yep, you start Maybe with Maybe Bidoof is going to have, like, a big hero arc in Arceus. It's like, oh, this is secretly, like, an ancient Pokemon of yore or something. Yeah, everyone knows that the Japanese beaver is a sacred animal. <laughs> I, uh, I read this book on the history of Minnesota, uh, oh. like, the earliest history and stuff. Well, I guess not earliest, but I guess for... Uh, you know, I can't uh, imagine Western it settlers. being that exciting. Well, what was fun about it, like I love hearing about like cultures interacting for the first times and everybody talking to the Sioux tribes and stuff, just trying to get on the same page. And then my favorite part was this is like the 1600s when like Father Hennepin came to Minnesota and all that nonsense. Um, but the best part is they had like letters and drawings and everybody that came to Minnesota was really trying to hype up Minnesota to everybody back in Europe. And I guess just kind of this overall region. And so they were talking about how beavers were these miraculous animals because they didn't exist in Europe. And it's just like these exotic things. So people would be like drawing pictures and they'd be like, you need to understand these beavers. And like academic people, uh, academic back in the day, what the hell did they know? But they were writing like whole essays and stuff for Europe about how beavers have like intelligence that's greater than chimpanzees like just below mankind and their colonies are as complex as ants but they're talking about beavers like they were this amazing crazy brilliant animal that was doing all these wild things and then over time it turns out no it's just a beaver it's just like this forgettable little rat thing that i guess it's kind of cool they make dams and then that's what we'll recall it um and then it's weird too because there's another weird drawing where somebody was writing back to england and they were talking about creatures called beeves. They were just beeves, not beavers is the way they were describing it. So it's like a weird game of telephone probably from back in the day. They were talking about how amazing these beeves are. And they drew a picture of it. And it's like a picture of like an antelope. It's like <laughs> some crazy thing with like crazy horns. So what world was this? Did they not even go to Minnesota? They just like heard through a friend of a friend that these things called beavers existed and that there's probably deer there and then combined them in their mind and then tried to brag about it. Point is, there were wild days back in the day. Oh, somebody mm -hmm. asked a big question based on last week's conversation. What do you think beavers smell like? Hmm. Dirt. Yeah. And water. And, and lake water. Just like the dirtiest lake water you could imagine. Yeah, like damp, like constantly, like maybe like a damp dog smell. Yeah. Mm. That would suck. Like your your default state is just lightly damp. Like every time they're going yeah. to sleep. But I mean, their fur probably is pretty waterproof. Maybe they think, maybe they think maybe that it sucks so. that we're always dry. Yeah. Do you think so, Janet? I like to think so. <laughs> when you're just looking up at the clouds, thinking about what beavers are thinking about on a daily yeah. basis. They're like, man, I'm glad I'm not humans. Look at them. They're paying for rent? What is that? Just make, <laughs> there's enough... Logs right, they're like, there's around. plenty of trees here. Yeah, just stack up like, a bunch of wood doing? and mud and call it a day. We went like, too advanced and it circled back around to stupidity again. Like, why am I not my cat? Right. She has no problems. She's living a life of luxury. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that's true. There's, um, I listened to this podcast not too long ago and they were talking about, uh, like, 
speculating about what human society was like 30,000 years ago or whatever. Does that make sense? There are human beings 30,000 years ago, right? Um, but just the fact that like, yeah, we worked less back then based on studying tribes that haven't had any contact with the outside world and stuff and trying to figure out like, what is their daily ritual like? And so it's like, what are we doing? We're progressing so much in society just so we can work more. Yes. Like, is that yeah. really progress? It's a weird idea, but I thought it was really interesting. Well, I think we originally, like, in terms of, like, working concepts, like, there, there was that idea that technology was going to make it so that we would have to work less, but instead what we did was utilize the technology to be more productive. Um, like, you know, being, the ability to type on Google Docs was supposed to be like, oh, great, now we don't have to spend as much time doing this task. And much like any... Um, well, I feel like every job wants you to do this. I don't know if it's fair to say any like crummy job, but whenever you don't have anything to do at like a white collar job, never admit it. Always look because <laughs> someone will give you some. Oh, you're not or even a blue collar job. Oh, you're I know you're not doing anything. Hey, can you help out with the why? Why do you, I did what I need to do? Why, there's that need to fill your time because they're like, well, we need to get all the hours out of you and like da da da. And you're what, I was like, why? I'm done. Let me be done. And also let me leave. Like when I'm done, what, like the fact that you have to run out the clock at jobs is like insane. And that's like, kind if I'm of, done with what I had to do, let me just leave. It's over. Yeah, that's kind of the beauty, I think, of more and more people accepting uh, remote work. Like I just heard that, what, one in seven jobs on LinkedIn now, 60 Minutes had a report, are, are remote. Um, and this idea of like, yeah, just get the tasks we assign you done. And then the rest of the time, I don't know. I guess we won't ask and you don't have to tell, right? Like just do whatever you want. As long as you're just getting this stuff done, that is what we're paying you for. So however you do it, Good on ya. Um, what was your all's worst job? Oh, worst job. Mm, probably, probably it's a tie. Thing. Ooh, I want to hear that. Like, so I worked for um, like a like a industry disruptor marketing a big marketing agency in LA. Um, like one of like the biggest, right? Like any kind of like experimental marketing, they did it. And I ran social media for their client. And it was like a fun, it was like, um, like a trick job, right? Like they had <laughs> unlimited free LaCroix, mm -hmm. unlimited snacks. We had like nitro brew coffee on tap. It was all open office. Looks like a West Elm magazine, all windows. You could see the Hollywood sign. Like I worked in Hollywood, but like. When you went home, you had to take your laptop with you Yeah. every day. Um, and you were just expected to, like, work extremely hard. And there was really no boundaries. Like, there was very much, like, company, toxic company culture uh, going on. Um, definitely not healthy. Uh, a lot of, like, expectations. A lot of, like, pushing. So, it's, like, the, the secret about all these big companies is they don't actually do most of the work. They pay like third party agencies to do it, like marketing and like all this stuff. And then the third party agency is the one that actually works for the company. Whereas the people at the company just manage the agency and say yes. The, no. ama <laughs> the amount of like it, you know, with like the manager vibes too, it reminds me of I watched like Office Space for the first time only a few years ago and I huh. rewatched it recently. And then what would you say you do here? And it's like, oh, well, I tell people to do their work. It's like, well, I was already doing that though. So what do you actually like? Oh, well, you know, then I like report back on how they did. It's like, you're not really doing it. Like the higher up you go in life, I feel like the less you work, which is mm -hmm. kind of crazy. And then and then the weird thing is like societally, it's like the people who are at the lower quote unquote lower jobs are perceived as like, oh, well, they just didn't like work hard. Like uh, to this day, like my parents work way harder than I ever have or ever will. Like I could not I could not do what my dad does for work. Like I, he's just like he works hotel service. But mm. I remember even just working at my which is going to sound very like privileged or whatever. But even working at my dining hall, like which is kind of what the kind of stuff my dad does because he'd be like in food and room service. I'm like. Dad, I'm not you be doing this. I can't. I'm gonna have to read these books because I can't do it. I can't. I'm gonna have to figure something else out because I can't work this much. Um, it is too hard. Or like my dad is overnight right now, and I could never do an overnight shift. I'm like, I don't know how you're doing, how you're doing this. And he's still like running. He's living his life. He's good. He's like running still. He has more miles than me, and I'm training for a marathon. Like what? I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. Is my he running job, around though, the hotel? He he just he'll straight up like he'll come home from like an overnight shift and then like 
change and go for a run and then go to shower, go to sleep. Like, I don't, he's casually running six to four. Like he, like, I mean, I love running, but he like loves it in a really pure way. Like he's like, I just, I just go there and I clear my head and I'm like, no, I go there and I do my, my workout and I come home and I'm glad when it's over and I'm not going out for a while. But, um, my worst job there's a lot of a lot of bad experiences <laughs> running through my head. I think probably substitute teaching was my worst job right. because it it definitely didn't have the work comes home with you part, which was really nice, um, especially because I was still looking for like actual work because I didn't want to be a sub forever. Um, but that was like the worst job because at any given day, like you could have a really god awful experience. Like sometimes, like on a good day, it was like a nice gig because it's like all right, you show up, you don't have to do much. And I, you know, have teaching background, so it's easier for me to be with students than like someone who doesn't because like I know how to do it generally. But like on the worst day, <laughs> like I think the worst day I had, there's two bad days I had at that job. One, I took an elementary ed gig that was like kindergarten or first grade. God bless elementary educators. I don't Oof. know how you do it. I couldn't I couldn't do it and I couldn't do it at the time. And I like I had my dad pick me up from work that day and I'm like, I just was thinking like, God, let this day end. And the day's not even a full day. Like I just could not get these kids to do anything. They were, you know, having mental breakdowns. Stuff was getting stuck on the wall. I was like, oh my God, please don't let me lose anybody. And it's like, you got to go to the bathroom. But like, if I send you to the bathroom, will you come back? I can't be liable for this. <laughs> oh, I don't know this school. I don't know this building. Like I'm just, when is Jim? You line up. Like it was, it's just so, it was so horrific. And then my other really bad day was, um, I taught this one school and like <laughs> red flag number one was they're like, OK, like, to be honest, like you should probably check your bag here because like people get their stuff stolen. And I'm like, I'm, I'm OK for like one time I did it. And then one time I didn't. And the time I didn't check my bag, I had my wallet in my bag at the front at the desk in the classroom. But I went to help a student with something. And during that time, someone stole my wallet. Well, but, like, what, no what grade tell is me this? Who stole it, that I had to call security. Um, This is like high school age. OK. Um, and it was really, it was really dark too. Cause I'm like, uh, and I'm like, you're really not getting anything out of this. Cause I don't have cash on me. I'm like, honestly, like if one of y'all could just like return my ID, like something, oh. like I had nothing. I didn't have my, like, I didn't, I don't have a car. So I, this is so fucking dark. I don't have a car and I, I still can't drive to this day. So I had like my bus pass or whatever, like my, you know, venture card. So like, I called my brother and I'm like, yo, can you pay? Like, I don't have any, I have nothing now. I have no, and I'm like way like an hour away from my house. Like, obviously I didn't teach there again, but it was just like, really, it was just bad. And like everything about that. And, you know, for those things too, like a lot of people, oh, the kids are like bad or whatever. I don't really blame the kids. It's like, the kids are a product of like a lot of things falling apart. Like the fact that there's all these subs needed in this school. Like there's just a lot of, a lot of systems failed. So it's like, it's, you know, it's not that deep either way, but like that was just a horrible experience. And there's like, no, there's so many bad things from subbing. Subbing is brutal. I kind of like, it will destroy you if you're not ready. I just heard that like you don't need to even have a high school degree to be a sub now. Like you can literally just like walk in because they're so desperate for sub, especially mm -hmm. now where every school is just emptying out more and more, especially with Omicron and whatnot. But to, there's a part of me that kind of wants to try it. Like just I know it would kick my to ass to be a sub. Don't aren't you just curious if you no. could like command a classroom and like no you, maybe maybe you can be the cool person wouldn't it be nice have to go to high school have you never worked with cool? children before i'm not familiar with children in general i've seen them on tv a couple times i think i could handle it well what do you think like if you went into like a seventh grade sub do you think you would leave crying like do you, do you think it would really be that bad seventh grade yeah let's say seventh grade i would put on a movie yeah and then i that would be it i'd be like here i'd roll in the tv cart and I'd be like, I'm not doing this. Here's your movie. <laughs> Leave me alone. It's Wishbone, by the way. Good pick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mother Bear is a, a good pick. one for middle school. I've thrown that mm, one on. That's that one. I um, didn't even like being in the seventh grade. Like, why would I want to teach it? I don't know. But don't you, you could walk in and you could pull this card. You could be like, well, taking a break from my normal job in the video game industry. I promise you that will get you ripped apart. <laughs> really? I promise I you, promise you that two is not people a will think that's interesting and everybody else is like, not interested. Like, I don't know. It's not, it, the other thing too, it's not like, well, teaching is like the most brutal job in the world, I feel like, uh, which I did used to do that full time. Um, but I don't know. It's complicated because it just depends on like the group of kids you get and, and if you understand certain things. Like I remember my friend tried to sub um, like she was in the same program that I was in and she did some subbing, 
But she like would and she had like some really rowdy like kids at times. And she like tried to do like this very what is it called? It's not Pavlonian, but you know, like, uh, you know, like stuff where you give like rewards, like reward based stuff. She's like, oh, I'm going to do this thing where, yeah, if you're oh, if they're good, like they're going to get like this letter. And if it forms this word, we get a movie. I'm like, yeah, but what happens when they fail that? Then there's nothing to incentivize them anymore. And now, like, you have nothing. A positive reinforcement, essentially. So, but that's stuff that, like, I... Not that that's, like, oh, that makes me a genius. But, like, I know that kind of stuff because I, like, have done a bunch of ed stuff. So I'm right. like, yeah, like, that's not going to work. Like, I don't know. It, it's a, it just depends on, like, the group of kids you get and stuff. But, like, the ability to navigate that and, like, you know, go from one day where it's really good and you're like, you have a really productive class and you help out some students and it's a it's a fun time to another day where like someone literally throws a water bottle at your head. It's like, you gotta be able to move. You gotta be able to like, you know, it's Tuesday, it's Thursday. Maybe I just don't, the one nice thing is I didn't have to go in all the time for subbing. So there'd be days where I'm like, I could really use this $125, but I'd rather have my mental health. So I'm just gonna right, be broke today. Right. And just not go. Um, so I didn't like I did it for like half a year or something. I didn't go like every day. Um, yeah, creepy students suck too. Yeah, like I creepy taught I, I subbed one day at an all boys school. And that was I was so scared going in that school. Uh, it was like fine. But like I was not. Mm -mm. I'm like, this is not going to be a good time. But, you know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, I think it's just kind of media pollutes your brain uh, for the idea of teaching and subbing. Because my mind, it's like. Oh, it's just Mr. Bergstrom from The Simpsons. I could do that. I could take my guitar in there and just be cool with the students. Uh, probably not. Or you just think of like, you know, it's going to be like Dead Poets Society in there. It's going to be awesome. Let's really revolutionize yeah, these kids' really minds. Doesn't. You know what's crazy about that, too, is like maybe you did make an impact on a kid's life, but you're not going to know. Like, you just have to do your best. And yeah. that's it. I remember, do you ever have, do you ever have memories of uh, like teachers being shockingly human? I remember like one time we had, uh, there were kind of two <laughs> science classes and one time I requested to transition to the other science class because all my friends were in there and I really didn't get along with my science teacher. It's just like, and for some teachers, I just was very confrontational. <laughs> just like, I am just going to be a dick. Like I am going to do things my way. What, uh, you? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't great. But anyways, I, so I requested the move and I remember she like kept me after class and talked to me about it. And she's like, why, why are you switching classes? Like, why, why do you hate me so much type of thing? And there were like tears in her eyes. And I was like, it's just because all my friends are over there. Like, it's not anything personal. Like, it's so weird when you have that moment of like, oh, that's right. This is like personal for the teachers. You forget about that fact. You think it's like, well, this is just their job. And remember, and teachers are humans and they don't live at the school. Did you, did you think that your teachers were humans? Did yes. you fully understand that yeah. as a kid? No, 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 no. I thought they lived at the school part. Like when I was a kid, I literally yeah. thought they did. But then when I grew up and became a teacher, I'm like, yep, you basically do live at the school because there's so much damn work. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like. But yeah, like that's that's something that I always reminded myself as a teacher, like obviously it's nice if you live in a world of empathy, but like that cuts both ways and like it more cuts on my side because I'm like the person in power and the adult. So it's like for me, I'm like my kids, there's a lot of kids here that probably like don't care about what we're doing and they might be going through like a lot of stuff personally or just, you know, what think about like the problems that kids have at, at that age. Like mm -hmm. they can be like really immense. You can have like, you know, there are kids that that work jobs and they they have like late shifts and they come in and they're tired. Like there's so much going on that like you have to remind yourself that like one, don't take it personal. And two, like there's a million like your class is a blip in this kid's life like this. Most kids are not like. Oh man, it's all coming down to third period English class. Like, right. there's so much going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I did try to like remind them that I was a human being. Um, but that's I think that's the hardest thing. Like, not like having hard conversations with students and not crying because then you look like like a punk ass if you cry. Which I know, like, oh, we normalize crying. But like, I yeah, I can't cry in front of my students, so I'm just like, okay. I'm going to say this and deliver the speech, but I'm like, I really just want to cry because I'm so tired and oh like, this God. is so bad. But, you know, yeah, I don't do that anymore. So it's, on, yeah. that's nicer. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. And yeah. I was a pleasure and a joy to have in class. Well, said all my teachers during every yeah. teacher conference. Uh huh. Miss 4.0 over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, uh, chat said, what's Ben's worst job? What is your worst job? You didn't actually answer. Uh, like this one right here with you all right I've been, now. I've been very spoiled and very lucky. Um, cause like my, I worked for a, in a grocery store for two and a half years in high school. Um, but it was awesome because all of my friends worked there. 
like the boss had no idea that we were all best friends. And so he just like accidentally hired just like my entire friend circle. It's like this weird inside thing. Like, parasite. Don't, yeah. It's oh, like, without don't. The, the dark twist, I hope. Well, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, don't tell him that secretly we're all really good friends and he just completely blew it because now we're going to slack off a little bit more. Um, but I actually, I liked working at that grocery store. It's kind of fun. But that's a, that's a saga for another day because the boss was... Uh, not a great guy, um, convicted pedophile, oh and so that's a oh that's a God. whole saga for another day. Um, so that was okay in general. And you're like, I don't know why he hired all my friends, and oh I, my that God. is so weird. No, all my cute oh, friends. Man. He just that, yeah, that, opened the door. It's so weird how he keeps hiring all these guys my age. Yeah, it's bizarre, but hey, it worked out. Um, let's see. Then I worked in an art gallery. That was pretty good because their kid, like the owner's kid was always there and he was like nine. Um, and he was always in the back playing GameCube. And so I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't know how to like, they asked me to like mail a letter one time. Like, I don't know where the stamp goes. I don't know anything. And so they're like, just go back and play Pikmin 2 multiplayer with our son. I was like, fantastic. Thank you. This is great. And that's where I played Kirby Air Ride, Sarah. Um, so I got paid to play Kirby Air Ride. So that was pretty sweet. Nice. Um, and then I think like the, the closest I got to a horrific job was I went back home after freshman year of college and was just looking for any place to work. And there was like a nursery. And so I went there because it was like the only job to apply for like a landscaping job. Where I'm like, you know, maybe I could become a physical person. <laughs> maybe I could work outside and get tan and get strong and stuff, even though it's just antithetical to everything that I stood for in my life up until that moment. And I remember going through the interview and the guy was skeptical because I'm just some stupid dweeb. I don't know anything. I don't know how to lift anything or drive a anything. And then at a certain point, he like looked me in my eyes. And he's like, I need you to really tell me that you can do this job. Can you do this job of being a landscaper? Yes, I can. He's like, okay. And then like that day, uh, a video rental place called me back about a job and said, hey, we do have an opening after all. And I was like, oh, thank God. I just get to go work in this video, video rental store and play N64 emulator on the computer all day. Oh, and just blast Smash Brothers music throughout the old video rental store. It's just the best. So, yeah, I've been really, really lucky with all my jobs. I kind of enjoyed a lot There's of that stuff. There's still time. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you never know. Never know. That's, isn't that like, I feel like that's the horrifying thing. Like you're never really like safe until you're, I guess, retired. And even then, that's kind of shaky. Even then, there's no escape. Yeah. Um, Janet, you mentioned on Monday that you were cosplaying Kyla Hilliard with your gaming life. Oh, yeah. Yep. What's going on? What are you Solar playing? Ash. I played Solar Ash. And actually, Kyle showed up in the chat. I had just talked about him, uh, as I often do when it's relevant. You summoned um, him. Don't summon yes, him. Yes, I did. I was like, oh, like Kyle Hilliard said this is game of the year. And like, you know, my thing was, um, I'm like, I'm going into this wondering who is inadvertently lying to me personally, Blessing or Kyle Hilliard? Because Blessing from kind of funny, they, both of them like the pathless. I also like the pathless. Blessing says the game is like pathless, but worse. Kyle says the game is like the pathless, but better. Right. Somebody's got to be incorrect, at least based on my perception. Right. Yep, it's all correct. subjective. Um, so I'm like, let's find out today who is very. I'm like, this is content only I care about. because only I know both these people in this way. But I'm like, who is lying to me? And then funny enough, Kyle actually showed up in the chat, but I've never seen Kyle's Twitch handle. And his name is Kyle Impersonator. <laughs> right. And when right. I saw like follow from Kyle Impersonator, I was like, oh, that's funny. Like we were just talking about Kyle Hilliard. Like, <laughs> you know, I wonder if this is you impersonating Kyle. And he's like, I am Kyle Hilliard. And I was mm -hmm. like, bro, you ain't Kyle Hilliard. T tell me something only Kyle would, would say. And I forgot <laughs> what he said. Um, and I was like, I was I was like, what's the one thing you really like in games? And I'm and he said, um, I think going fast. And I'm like, that's good. But I was Gotta looking for fast. glider. So I don't know. And then yeah. like I was just laughing like, eventually. That moment when you climb a really high mountain and you look over the entire game world and you can go to that mountain that's mm -hmm. a kyle moment to me and yes. a piano twinkles a little bit yeah mm -hmm. that that's kyle but he did slack me and he's like no but for real this is me i was like okay <laughs> but I, I was like then just like the having that name like that combination and i have right. something that happened like not crazy all the time but you know Sometimes there'll be like a name doesn't necessarily mean that this is like that person. It's like maybe you're just a fan of this game. And then every now and then they're like, no, I'm the developer or I'm the social media manager or something. Right. But so I never assume anything based on like anyone's unless I know that handle. Like and even then, like you can claim different stuff. I'm like, Blessing Junior. This is probably Blessing. Maybe <laughs> just someone else with his name. I don't know. Maybe someone trolling him. I don't know who's who's there. But that happened um, to me. 
I had that moment where I was streaming Death Stranding and someone came into my chat claiming to be like the voice actor for I think it was Dead Man? The right? guy, guy, who is it? The, the guy that always talks that like gives you all the quests. Die Hard Man? That, yeah, yeah, I think mask, that's who right? it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he Die Hard Man came into my chat. <laughs> and I was like, ah, ha, ha, like, that's so funny. Like, are you sure? Like, mm. um, and then it turns out he was. And like, I was talking like mad trash about the character oh, because he kept no. like, telling me to do shit. Not when he was there, but I did feel a little bad. Um, and I didn't believe it at first. Like, I mean, because like so many people How will come you believe it and just claim. Um, I think someone else like confirmed it in my chat. They were like, no, he is. And he was like, I really am. And he apparently tweeted about it, that he was going oh. to be going into people's Death Stranding oh, streams. Okay. But, like, I didn't know because I had been streaming oh, Death God. Stranding for like days before that. So I That's... wasn't like, oh, better boot up the Death Stranding. One funny thing about that is it kind of feels, you know, like bringing it back to like, the school conversations, like the equivalent of like if the streamer is a teacher and the chat is the classroom mm -hmm. yeah. when people who make or work on the games come in it's like the principal comes in and like us as the streamer it's like okay it definitely feels a little bit like oh i'm being perceived but it's also like okay it's fine like i do what i do and if i'm doing it like well or appropriately right you're not being like just a, a jerk to be a jerk's sake we, you know we have plenty of criticisms all the time and it's like okay cool it's all good business as usual it's a little weird but like it'll be fun but then the like for me at least i don't know how your chat is sarah i always feel like my chat gets a little bit like Okay, like let's be a little. Let's I don't know. Let's like they, I yes. feel like they're a little self conscious about totally. it. Totally. Mm -hmm. Plus, like it's weird for it, Mr. Die Hardman because it's like, it's not as if you're the voice of Kratos jumping into people streaming God of War. Like Death Stranding is kind of divisive. Dare I say, kind of dumb games at times. Dumb, dumb gaming times. And so the idea of like jumping in, you don't know if people are just going to be ragging on you or if people are going to be loving you. But even out of the people that love Death Stranding, I don't think anybody was like. This performance of Die Hard Man <laughs> is bringing me to tears. tears. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, no one's, no one's. Anyways, but they were polite enough, Sarah. Oh yeah, like they were super cool about it, and I really appreciate them for jumping. It's always fun when someone like jumps in the chat. Yeah, that's like worked on the game, or you know, really like like you had the translator for your tomato game. Oh jump my in. god, that was the craziest like, thing. We all had those moments. Yeah, it's it's always a delight. Yeah, so I um, streamed starting on Thursday. I streamed three hours of Tomato Adventure, an old Game Boy Advance RPG from Alpha Dream, from the developers of the Mario Luigi series. Uh, we'll talk about it way too much on the podcast this week. But then on Sunday, I had to place myself. I'm like, yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll continue streaming that thing. And thank God for this, because like within the first hour, somebody jumped in the chat. And their name was Dropper DeMille, and they seemed to be like a little high on the hog, like kind of just like knowing a thing or two about this game and having a kind of a weird attitude. And then eventually it was like, oh, it turns out they were the fan that translated the entire game and they've played through the game, I think he said like 50 times. Uh, and so then it was like, well, we have him here and maybe we're going to get stuck at a couple points. So it's nice to have him around. Also, it's fascinating to play this fan translated game and have the translator here to ask, like, what was this translation? What was this translation? Why is this this way? Why is it this way? And him answering every single question along the way was amazing. And so because of that, then I just didn't stop streaming. And so I streamed that game for 10 and a half hours straight on Sunday um, just to really put Sarah to shame. Because everyone in the chat really? chat's like, you call Sarah, Sarah a maniac for streaming for like four and a half or five hours. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know. I think it's really impressive. I now have more respect for her because that takes so much energy to do that. But it was just like- And I, here you are on hour 10, like, guess I'll keep going. Yeah. And I was going to finish it that night too because I thought I was right at the final boss. Um, we're like, all right, I got to stop here, I guess. And then I finished it off yesterday. And thank God, because that was another five hour stream then to finish it off. Mm -hmm. So the idea that- I was even considering going for 15 hours is insane. Yeah. But the translator jumped in and it was, uh, it was so much fun just to have somebody to bounce off of. And it's it just felt like having a smart AI walkthrough in the chat at all points. I'm like, don't go that way. You're going to regret that. Make sure you equip this. And it's still, that game still kicked my ass. Which is always you helpful have, when like, chat does that. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say you have like the longest recorded tomato adventure experience now like have you checked on the internet like are there other like uploads of a walkthrough there are walkthroughs like, through? yeah there's bits and pieces i don't know if there's like a full let's play out are there. you like the holder of like the full completed let's play of this game it could be so here's like my video like that's been recorded maybe 
That could be, yeah. What That's pretty um, impressive. Yeah, because it took me like 19 hours uh, total. But uh, my question is, what do I do with this tomato adventure knowledge? Because like it is pretty niche. That's a dangerous question to ask. I know. What do we do with any of this? I guess you you're, you're doing it now. But I want to do is something. You doing it? Spread I know. the word. Preach the word of tomato adventure. I will, because that game rules. And if I would have played it back in 2002, it'd be like Hall of Famer. It is. It is up there with like a Paper Mario. Um, is it really that good? It's really good. It's really good. It's it's not the art looks look, good. Paper Mario is uh, top tier. It's in the ballpark of a Paper Mario. Not not to that level, but it's awesome. Um, but. Now it's like I want I have all that captured footage and so I kind of want to do a I don't know video review or I think I might call up uh, Dropper the translator and maybe just make a video that's all about the game and then just kind of mm-hmm. run B roll of the highlights because I was curious about that game and I I'm trying to think of the ideal YouTube video that I would have wanted to I would have wanted to stumble across and I guess it would just be like highlights of the game and kind of people explaining what this is and why it's so good. Because um, mm-hmm. we have all this great footage, so we should use it. But yeah, it rules. And the music, Shazira, you're right. I, I've had that music stuck in my head uh, all of today and all of last night. Like, I couldn't go to sleep last night because I was so excited about that grand finale and that <laughs> music because it's so good. It's so good. I just love that yesterday you were streaming your really nice tomato game <laughs> and having a great time. Yep. And then on the opposite side of the foil, I was having an emotional breakdown playing near Automata. Yeah. Just absolutely like hopes and dreams crushed. Yoko Taro sending me through the ringer at all in all directions. And then here's Ben like five hours into his tomato game. <laughs> Don't think it was all sunshine over there either. Sunshine and tomatoes because the final <laughs> boss leveled me. And there's a bunch of really complicated dungeons in the end too. So I was screaming at times. But what mm-hmm. uh, yeah, what's the near auto- automata near a tomato um, playthrough going like? It's it's really good. I don't know why it's taken me this long to play it. Yeah. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Honestly, definitely, you know, a favorite for me. A standout of the year, like a standout in general, but... So what... I, I think we talked about this somewhere, but like what was your experience with it? Because 8.4 localized it and it was just in the so office? It was... I joined 8.4. I was there in like 20, 2015, 2016, and then I returned to college to graduate. And while I was back doing my senior year, that's when they were localizing near because that was like like 2016-ish. Gotcha. And then I came back in 2017 when they were doing localization QA. So I would literally like stand in the office behind Roy and he'd be running around as like 2B and he'd be like, want to watch me explode? And I'd be like, okay. And he would like push two of like the control sticks in and I'd watch him explode. <laughs> but um, yeah, I wasn't, I never worked on it. Like I was just kind of, I think I was doing like Undertale at the same time. That was when we started it. Okay. So those were kind of like happening in tandem. Gotcha. Um, but I would watch him do like low QA on it. So you knew like the big story beats and no. stuff, right? Really? I like low, low QA was just like Roy running around in circles and like making sure all the text looked good. Oh, wow. So this is basically yeah. a fresh run for you. Mm-hmm. I knew some points in the game, like the early points, mm-hmm. but I was not, I didn't know like anything else about the game. So pretty much completely blind. Janet, do you have any experience with Nier Automata? No, it's like, you know what? I'm, <laughs> this is gonna, This sounds mean, but I don't mean it to be mean. I think I'm trying to recategorize my backlog and the things I want to play into like better buckets that can serve me and knowing what's going on because I've never been relaxed ever. Um, hmm. And I think that's going to go into games people want me to play that I probably won't. It's just really long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think that's I'm, gonna, near I'm ordering was for that me. list. I'm ordering that list based on how likely I am to play them. So... I think it could be on the higher end of that. Like, I, I've seen also a lot of people go back with the... God, what is it? A re-release? A re For the original. Ma- the remaster of the original, yeah. Yeah, the thing that just came out that people yep. were like, this is really good. A lot of people have been playing that, so I'm like, maybe I should join them in that. But I don't know. Yeah, I think you could probably jump right to Nier Automata. Uh, this very frustrating thing happened on the 8-4 Play podcast. I think it was like on the last episode, the episode before that. But I think it was Mark at some point was just like, hey, this is the team. Can somebody say definitively how we're pronouncing near Automata? Automata, how are we pronouncing it? And John was like, eh, I kind of go back and forth. It's like, <laughs> no one else should be able to say that except for the localization team. And even they are like, eh, I don't know, whatever, either way, which is infuriating. But here, here's the thing. Uh, I, I enjoyed that game fine. But how stupid am I, Sarah? Because I played through 
one and three fourths of. So you only you played it? through A and B. Yeah, I didn't. I don't yeah. think I finished B because I was like, I don't want to do all this crap again. That's thing that like doesn't sit quite right with me. Like when people are like, oh, when credits roll, the game actually, and everyone's like, it makes sense in context. And like, yeah, I'll do what people tell me to do in that <laughs> context because enough people have said it that I believe it. Um, but I'm like, I don't, what's with this A, B, C, Z? Like if it's done, it's done. If it's not, no, it's not. Like it's I feel not. like I sound a million years old, but I don't know what that means. And I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> Yeah, I heard like spoilers for some of the stuff that happens if you've done a lot of playthroughs that sound really cool, but at the same time, it's like, I just don't know if I want to replay this. I understand that B is the most similar to A compared to everything else. Is that right, Sarah? Yeah, it's, I mean, I also, I was also very like, you know, going into it, like, I don't really want to play this game again. Like, I just played it. I don't want to do it again. Right. But B is actually much shorter than A. That's what people say. So you say. get to a point in the game where it just like zip lines you through the greatest hits and then mm. you're in C. And C's like, I feel like the the true, like, where the story was actually going all along. But like I said, I'm just in my third playthrough, so I don't know where the heck I am. Oh, God. Do um, you, uh, chat I'm says, enjoying it. Near A being described as five playthroughs is the biggest disservice to getting people to play it. It's one playthrough with credits in the middle, which I kind of want to call cap on that, but I do think that's kind of what could... Well, this is like light, light spoilers for Control, sort of, if you really don't huh. want to know anything about that game somehow. But they have a kind of moment like that where they... It's not like that's when the game ends because it zoops you back and you can tell that there's more game. So that's one of the only instances where credits did roll and I did not turn off the console because, like, you can just tell that they weren't, like, you know... Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just a little and did people know that when they first played it? Like, what was reviewing that? Like, like the OG version of it. For I would have just ended it and been done. Maybe they told, maybe they made PR said like, don't, there's I, more. I think somebody even mentioned that PR really tried to emphasize. Yeah, I'm sure that was a big messaging point. It's like, oh, just keep going. Multiple playthroughs are important. So is it like, is it genuinely impactful emotionally, Sarah? Or just interesting and dark and weird? I mean, there was a moment in my last playthrough in my stream yesterday where it's like it was probably one of like probably one of my like top video game moments really too because it's really because it like it made it was sadder to me than like all of before your eyes in this one condensed moment Interesting. i'll say because the issue is that it's hard to have a video game and like make the action of playing the game feel like, make it feel emotional, like, the action right. of, like, fighting enemies emotional, the action of, like, playing the game emotional, yeah. and I think it just did a really good job synergizing, like, playing the game and the story. I don't know. Right. I, I've been really enjoying it. That's um, awesome. It's not, like, making me question, like, realities of life <laughs> or anything, but it is a good... And I've never been bored with it. Yeah. I, sometimes I get bored playing bigger games. Oh, yeah. But, like, this has been holding my attention the entire time. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Uh, people in the chat love it. Everybody loved it back in, what, 2018, 2017? I know. I really missed the boat on this. Yeah. No, that's fine. I'm glad you're catching up with it now. And, yeah, maybe I should feel more guilty for not going back and playing it even more. But I felt like I kind of get the gist. It's, it's cool. Music's awesome. I can move on. Um, but that's my bad. All right. Hey, that's a bonus podcast, everybody. Uh, if you enjoyed it, you can vote for us to create more um, over on Patreon, patreon.com slash max with two ends. If you're at that $10 tier, you can vote for us to create or continue any new show. We'll have other options next week. Do you think we can top bonus podcasts? Is this just going to be the rest of our lives? I know we ask that every time that a new show plus thing starts rolling, but what can do it? What can dethrone bonus podcasts? If you have any ideas in the chat. Come on. But that's not going to be available at the time. Yeah, even Friday. Even like a stream of Pokemon, I think I think it would lose. I don't know if it could. I don't know if it could beat it. Min Max Salty Bet. Yep, that's an idea. Uh, DJ Leo. DJ Leo. <laughs> DJ Leo was a contender. DJ Leo does sound good. That's right. Maybe we could just. And again, I'm not into sandbagging new show plus choices, but maybe there's some topic that could be less interesting. Like it's new show plus tax time, and we just talk about. Texas and stuff like that. I still don't have my forms for that. So I'm like, mm. I don't know, man. They're going to take the money they're going to take when they take it. 
<laughs> well, that was it. She kind of jumped the gun. That was going to be our tax discussion. Uh, we yeah, there we you can. go. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. You can always unlock the podcast version of all of these and the previous episodes and all that stuff over on Patreon. We'd appreciate it. If you're watching us live on Twitch, by the way, just a reminder, we have Trivia Tower happening tonight. Uh, it is happening at 6.30 p.m. Central. So if you want to support us on Patreon at the $2 tier, you can compete and win an Asteroid 40 headset. You can win codes for Nobody Saves the World. You win codes for the Anacrusis, for Death's Door. Bunch of good stuff. So we appreciate the support there. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. Uh, Janet, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Sarah Petorski, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Every week, we let Patreon supporters choose which new show we create with New Show Plus. Should we create another episode of the show you just watched? Check out the biggest new game release? Get into Sea of Thieves? Create an exercise show? It is your call. So thanks to everybody who subscribes on YouTube or supports us over on Patreon. MinMax exists because of you. As always, if you enjoy MinMax content, any help telling a friend is appreciated.